Hey everyone, it's me, Kirk Maston here at Maston Labs, and today we're going to be talking about family photography and which preset or style to use on your photo to get the best result. So before I jump in, I'm going to go over our Maston Labs three-step workflow. We worked really hard on this to make it as easy as possible for you to get the best look possible for your image so that you and your clients will love what you make for years to come. So no wasted time. No weird styles, just good stuff. And uh, that all comes from film. So, okay, so first you want to apply the preset. It's really important that you apply it first because real film and the emulations that we make from it have a global starting white balance. It's just a thing. Like Fuji film is cooler right out of the scanner than Kodak film in general. So you're gonna to want to apply the preset first. Second, you're gonna be adjusting your exposure Often this is increasing your exposure because most cameras tend to protect highlights by slight underexposure at the sensor. So usually you bump it up a little bit. The last thing you're going to be doing is adjusting white balance and tint. White balance is super easy. Is the person a Smurf or an Oompa Loompa? Are they too, too blue, too orange? White balance, you can fix it there. Not a big deal. What's a little bit harder is seeing tint. Tint is, at least in Lightroom, either you know moving the slider more green or more magenta, which is really unfortunate because you should have more tint sliders like uh, cyan and red like you would have in Photoshop, then like the world would be an amazing place. But you only have green and magenta and a lot happens on that tint slider to get perfect skin tones and to get all the colors to lock into place. So I'll be going over all of those steps with each of these photos. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments and I will answer them as I go. So let's get started. We've got these great images from the Mass and Labs community. If you're not already part of the Mass and Labs community on Facebook, please go there and join us. It doesn't matter if you own anything or not, just go there, join us, um, and drop your images in there. They might be in a live edit just like this. So this is all from our community and it's really, really fun. I'll remind you again at the end of the show, but please join us. You will not regret it. Okay, so this first image is by Stephen, Stephen Lebrecht. And Stephen wanted Portrait 400 push one stop. Good choice, good choice. Uh, that is from our uh, Portrait pushed pack. That is taking Portrait films, like the actual real films, and pushing them in development for uh, a more stylized look, deeper shadows, more contrast, more saturation, some color shifts in the shadows sometimes. It's a really fun pack and it's great for fall settings like this with the leaves, um, a little more oranges, browns in the image. So I think it should work out pretty good. I'm gonna do it with Portrait 400 and then I'm gonna show you an alternate edit with something out of the Fuji Pushed pack because I think that would also work well for a slightly different mood. But I'll do both, then you can see. So here is Portrait 400 pushed one stop. I apply the preset first, that's step one. Next, I'm going to adjust exposure. I think the exposure could come up just a little bit. And if I'm adjusting exposure and I see some part of the image is still too dark, still too light, even after I get the midtones where I want, and by midtones, I mean this whole section right here on the histogram, if you can see that, it's kind of where the you know the mid gray tones are once i get those where i want on the histogram usually in the middle if things are falling outside of that in a way that i don't like such as like the sky being too bright or the shadow being too dark i can fix that later with tone profile with different tone profiles down in this section and i'll get to that it's it's like one extra step beyond the three-step workflow it's like kind of extra polish that we give you in every pack that's Portrait 400, slight adjustment up with the exposure. Last step is temperature and tint. So I'm gonna to go to the temperature slider and I'm just gonna work this up until I feel that the image is the right amount of warmth. Uh, a really great trick I learned a long time ago is that if you're unsure, um, with either the temperature or the tint slider, what you can do is you can just do kind of large sweeps with it like this. So I'm going way past you know, where I want and then as I do that, I just make smaller and smaller sweeps, just looking at the photo. And your eyes and your brain will just tell you kind of where to land. 
So I would just sweep back and forth until it felt like I was right on that kind of crossover point between, between being too cool and too warm. And now the last thing I'm gonna do is look at tint. So is the image too green or too magenta? And if you've seen other videos that I've done, uh, in particular, there was one video I did that's just on the tint slider. I highly recommend that you watch it. You should watch it right after this. I go into a little trick I use to get the tint just right. And that trick, in a nutshell, is don't look at the skin tones. Look for something neutral in the photo and adjust for that. What do I mean by neutral? I mean something that you, you believe to be naturally either gray or black or white. So I'm looking at this roof back here. I'm looking at their pants, jeans. I guess in the UK, that would be really silly for me to call them pants. Um, yeah, haha. Uh, don't get me started on the fanny pack. Um, people in America wear a thing called a fanny pack, yes. Uh, this tree bark back here, it's, it is brown, but you can, you can kind of see, you know, different tones in that that might, you might not want. Um, and then I'm just kind of going around looking for white. She's wearing like a pearl necklace. It's pretty small, so I don't know if I can use that as a reference. But looking at all of these, these points on here, um, actually, I'm going to warm this up just a little bit more on closer inspection. Looking at all these points everywhere, I can see a little bit of green creeping in to this roof back here. Roof or roof? Um, and I'm going to just adjust that using the tint slider towards magenta. Just like, I, I'm barely touching it. So here it looks a little green and whoop, right about there it looks just right. And at that point I have both things dialed in. Um, I, I hope that that doesn't seem complicated I think that, uh, you know, one thing I notice in the mass labs community um, is that there's often, not often, but sometimes people that, that really struggle, and I'm going to cool this down again just a little bit. I'm not always perfect. Um, there's a lot of people that struggle with the idea of like just tweaking and tweaking and tweaking things and really obsessing over, you know, is it too, too cool, too magenta, too green? And I slow down and try to show you kind of that two-step process of sweeping with the temperature and then going in and looking for neutrals with the tint so that you can do that and then move on. I think if you look at an image too long, you start to second guess yourself. It's kind of like if you've ever, I don't know, maybe only I've done this, but if you go to jump off of a bridge, like um, in the summertime into the river to swim, not to do anything else, um, uh, it's kind of like that. Like if you if you just go up there, make your choice, and jump in, you can do it. But if you hesitate and you think about it too much, then this uncertainty builds in you, and you will never jump. You'll never decide, and you need to decide on your photos and move on. It is the best way to get this right and get it done quickly. So I showed you my steps to get this done. This is kind of a tricky photo. We've got um, you know a, a lot of green. We've got these uh, leaves. Uh, we've got, you know, we're kind of balancing a lot of warmth here with skin tone. And so it is a little bit tricky sometimes to get it perfect. But I think this looks really good. And this looks like portrait pushed. It's going to have more of those kind of red and orange tones in it from being portra and then by being pushed. So that's like extra portra look. Okay, virtual copy. Now I'm going to just quickly start over and I'm going to show you another option that I think would look really good with this image. So I'm going to go into the Fuji Color Push Pack. These are all of the Fuji films that are our Fuji Color original pack, except this time they are pushed. That's why they've got the plus one or the plus two. That is a process that happens in the lab where you fake out the film that you're shooting. Well, no, let me, let me take that back you are simulating a different ISO for your film, like real analog film, that it isn't really, but you're making it work out in the lab by developing it a little longer, hence pushing it, and that affects the colors in the film. I think to like a really good effect. So this is the pushed pack for Fuji Color. And these films have got a little uh, more magenta in them, magenta and cyan. 
I think that those colors work really, really well um, with darker skin. They, they kind of, um, I don't know, they, they just like harmonize well with, with darker skin tones. And also these films in general kind of give you a joyful, light and airy look compared to Portrait Pushed, which is our like moody, you know, kind of emotional emo, you know, by a, a window light, like, you know, very moody look. This is a little lighter. So let me demonstrate. So let's do, let's do Fuji 160 NS plus two. It just rolls right off the tongue. Um, and I'm gonna increase the exposure. And then I'm gonna do the same as I did before in the other image where I'm gonna increase the temperature. And then I already know that this image is kind of biased towards green from the first edit I did. So I'm just gonna skip kind of zooming around it and I'm just gonna go right off the bat. I'm looking at this roof, roof back here and I'm gonna add just a little magenta, just like a tiny bit. It's like, if you know who Salt Bay is, the guy that throws salt off of his, his arm onto the stake, if you're into the social media, I'm like Salt Bay with the tint slider. It's just like a tiny bit of tint and it like bounces off my elbow onto the photo and that, that is like usually the right amount. So I just did a tiny bit. We've got the really nice light and bright and joyful pushed look from Fuji 160NS. Tends to be a little bit pink that's just the nature of that film, but I think it looks really cool on this photo. Um, you can decide for yourself um, if you want to see, you know, before and after, or if you want to see both versions, here you go. This is again from Steven Lebrecht from our community. Um, and I think both look great. They're very different from each other. You've got the, the kind of the more moodiness of Portra pushed, like for the Portra push pack, kind of that whole vibe is on the left side. And on the right, you've got kind of that more joyful, light and airy, bright and airy look from the Fuji or, or Fuji pushed pack. They're both pushed. They're just from a different family line, Kodak or Fuji. So there you go. Thank you for sending this in. Um, one thing I'd like to say about family photography is that, uh, well, like all photography, by matching the right preset with the mood of the photo, you enhance it even further. A lot of times people ask, what preset should I use for my photo? Like what pack and what preset from that pack? It's kind of like pairing wine with food, I guess. Some things will really enhance what's already in the photo. So if you have a moody, a dark and moody shot image, then using a dark and moody preset on top of it will enhance it. You can use something else and it won't like destroy it, but it's not the same as kind of really enhancing what's already there. This image can kind of go both ways a little bit. I think it's a little more joyful. So I'm, I'm steering it towards the Fuji push pack on the second edit, but it works in both. All right, let's move on. I never know if I'm like going too far into detail with this or not, but I just know that if I was watching, I love that stuff. A lot of editing videos I see, um, it's really too much about the, I don't know, little technicalities and not so much about the bigger picture. And I wanna bring you the bigger picture, which includes the vibe and the emotion of the photo and where does that fit into the edit? It's not all about like pixel peeping, etc. We have a question before I edit this photo. Yes. Yeah, I think actually, uh, so Trent Schrant, uh, I think is his name, uh, was asking about the previous photo and was curious how C200 or Superior would look on it. Okay, so Trent Schlemp asked, how would this previous photo look with C200 or Superior on it from the uh, Fuji Everyday Pack? One of my favorite packs, fantastic pack. Um, let me just show you. So I think it would look great. Um, Fuji Everyday is for everyday moments. It tends to work a little bit better in more urban environments where you don't have, uh, you know, where it's not predominantly like forest or grass, but I think it'll look great here anyway. So let's take a look. Like I said earlier, if you find the exact right preset for your photo, like like the, the vibe, it has a vibe check and it, it matches, it like, like tenet, like it all comes together really nicely, 
that's awesome. If you pick the wrong preset, it won't destroy the image. It won't make it terrible. It just won't enhance it as nicely as finding something that, that, that just kind of really matches the mood. I think Fuji Everyday could, so let's take a look. Uh, C200 is a very, uh, I mean, you can see as I applied it, it's, it's, it's got kind of flatter highlights. Um, it's a very warm film. In fact, I might decrease the exposure just a bit after applying it. Uh, I think it looks really cool, um, or it looks really nice. I don't want to say cool because it, it actually warms up the photo. And we also could put on um, Superior 400, which I really love out of out of the three in that pack, I think Superior 400 looks really fantastic because it has more emphasis on red, like kind of the reds inside of orange. And in general, I like my skin tones to favor red rather than green. Green is just kind of sickly most of the time. Um, and Superior really leans hard into, into kind of deeper orange red colors. And you can see it like in her face. So. If you go from here to here, she's not turning green. I mean, it's more of kind of a more neutral and maybe less uh, saturated look. But on this image, I think these skin tones, especially like this little kid here, he's just having the time of his life. Um, that's, those skin tones look really nice and rich, I, and I like it. Um, so I, I don't, uh, so Trent, I think, I think they're both good. We could actually throw all these up here on the screen and you know, just see you know, how they compare. Um, now I'm totally lost, which is which. I can tell you which one is the pushed one, is this one. Um, yes, I did that too fast. But anyway, my point is they all look really good. This one looks a little moodier, um, but these also look good. I hope that helps you. Appreciate that. Oh, good, cool, you're welcome. See you around in the group, Trent. <laughs> Keep, keep sending images. I appreciate it. Okay, so this is Cheryl Lombard, uh, another family photo. This is really nice. Um, I love that, that you just found a nice, clean background. That's fantastic. And you framed these three kids kind of, you know, in the middle of the street. So you, you have like uh, two lines from either side, kind of like a triangle pointing towards them and, and inward. And it's, it's a nice photo. It's a nice little candid moment. Um, you said any preset. Okay, any preset. Um, this looks like a kind of a candid, nostalgic family moment. So you know what I'm gonna do? I am gonna use what what was used to capture my childhood, uh, which is Kodak Gold 200 from the Adventure Everyday Pack. And I love this look. It is really fantastic. So this film is, if you are over the age of probably 35 at this point, your photos from when you were a child were most likely shot with Kodak Gold 200 if you lived in North America when you were a child. If you happen to live somewhere in Asia as a child, your photos were probably shot on Superior. That's my guess. Um, just, it was just the dominant you know, drugstore film at the time in both places. So, okay, gold 200, uh, I applied gold 200. I'm going to increase the temperature just a little bit. Um, we've got a nice, huge, neutral area to look at. This like road is fantastic. It really helps me to dial stuff in. Uh, their skin's a little bit bright. I might bring this down. Uh, I've got the temperature right. Now I'm gonna look at tint. Looking at this road, it looks a little green to me. Uh, her leggings, eh, a little cyan, which is kind of in the green family. Uh, this gray t-shirt is a little bit green. Definitely not uh, magenta. So I'm gonna add just a tiny bit of magenta. I mean, I mean, like, it's again, like Salt Bay, just, just a little salt flicked off of my elbow. I think I increased it from plus six to plus 11. That is like nothing in the Lightroom slider, which goes up to like a million. Um, and that little change is important. It's very subtle, but it just really kind of cleans up the skin tones to, to being really well balanced. So there is your basic nostalgic Kodak Gold 200 edit. 
I'm going to do two more things to it. So this is kind of going off of the three-step plan. This is like kind of some of our bonus tools. Um, this is a high overcast day. So what is high overcast? It is a situation we're in all the time, especially if you haven't exactly uh, chosen when you're going to shoot. It's just something happening. It happens here a lot in the Pacific Northwest. It's when the sky is gray, but it's super bright. So lots of clouds, no blue sky. It's very typical. Maybe if you live in Michigan, it's like this all the time too. And the sun is actually still very intense through those clouds and you get high overcast. How do I know this is high overcast? A little trick that I just know in my soul, uh, just cause I all, I've only ever done photography my entire life and I'm like 40 billion years old at this point is I notice that there's basically no shadow. So look at this, like no shadow, just a tiny bit under her foot. And yet look how bright these highlights are on their cheeks. And he's got kind of like, you know, like kind of dark circles, like where his eye, eye holes are, eye sockets. Um, and that's from the light being uh, from a direction that's just basically straight above and rather intense, even though it's overcast. Why am I telling you all this? Who cares? Okay, this is why I'm telling you. Um, that's why we have the tone profile section. You can do these really perfect little contrast adjustments, either in the highlights or shadows without making the entire image look like a HDR nightmare. I have a thing against HDR. It's just, just me. I had some bad experiences with it. Um, so what you do is you use highlight soft. So as I roll over that, you can see that that just like kind of knocks down those highlights, makes them look really nice. You could even go a little further and do all soft. And what that does is uh, look at the little kid's jacket here. So this is highlight soft. Now see how all the highlights are really nice and smooth on their faces. I could use all soft instead. They, they replace each other. And I'm not only getting the benefit of the highlight recovery, I'm also recovering a little bit in the shadows. So do you see that like in his jacket? That's kind of nice too. Depends on what you want. I think both look really nice. Um, I can tell a little better zoomed out. So I'm, I'm actually just gonna leave it with highlight soft looks good. Uh, one other thing you can do, here's another little tool, is in our toolkit section, we have lens correction. And that's really great for getting rid of that vignetting and distortion. I think that really helps this photo a lot, so I would use that. Um, we have other tools in here. I don't think they're needed. One thing I am going to do is I'm going to crop in. I just feel, I feel like it could be a little more powerful of a photo if we just get rid of some of this uh, dead, you know, I don't want to say dead space, unused area. Dead space has such a negative connotation. Okay, there we go. There is your edit, Cheryl. I hope you liked it. It was really fun. Okay, let us move on. Uh, I really wanted, yeah, let's just go down the line. Okay, so sweet. It's a nice looking family. Um, this is from... I'm, I'm not going to say your name right. Giselle? Yeah. Giselle Brady? Cool. Thanks for sending this in. Um, I love this. They are just, I don't know. There's a lot of warmth in this image. Like just the expressions. Uh, there's a lot of love. It's really nice. Um, you put Fuji. So I'm going to assume you mean Fuji 400H. It's our most popular look. Uh, I'll, I'll do Fuji 400H. I'm going to do Fuji 400H and then I'm going to do... I don't know, Ektar or maybe Superior 400. We'll, we'll see when, when I get there. Um, it's kind of a vibe thing. It's like what I'm feeling from the photo. Uh, so this photo has a lot of happiness in it, a lot of joy. There's a lot of um, more high key colors or high key areas. When I say high key, what I mean is this house is, is white or kind of cream colored. Uh, they're wearing, well, at least these two are wearing lighter clothes and him too. Um, so if you were to like kind of blur your eyes and look at the whole photo, the entire photo is kind of in the upper like high key range rather than being low key or dark. So I'm going to pick a preset based on that. And I think, I think you're wanting Fuji 400H, which is a high key preset or high key film, meaning it's supposed to be light and airy. So here is Fuji 400H. 
I'm going to um, go into exposure or not. I think maybe the midtones are just right. I'm going to leave it. Looks good. Um, I love this guy's expression. Um, okay, uh, temperature and tint. Let's see. I think I go a little bit warmer. Yeah, it's a tiny bit. And now I'm looking at tint and I'm looking for neutrals. Where have I got neutrals? Uh, this watering can, maybe these doors. Let me look around. Uh, this can right here, that looks like it could be white. This house could be cream colored, but it could be white. Or it's, you know, it's fairly neutral. I know that this is aluminum, right? Or steel, whatever. Steel or aluminum, that's usually kind of uh, neutral or a little bit blue. So let's see. I would say it maybe is a little bit green. So I'm gonna add just a tiny bit of magenta. Yeah, right about there. All right, so there's your super basic Fuji 400H edit. Really nice and clean, simple. Um, I'm gonna do two things so that I don't uh, lose my mind. <laughs> One of them is we have a tool called Auto Transform. I love it, I love it. I love it. it. It takes one of the most powerful features of Lightroom, in my opinion, which is the transform area. It puts it all in one little button for you. Um, and what it does is it fixes all the watch from this to this. It straightens out all the lines. I think it's one of the most powerful upgrades you can make to a photo is to fix the uh, perspective. I mean, bar none. It was like a life changing moment for me. When I figured that, when I really figured that out many, many years ago, probably 15, 20 years ago, um, it's one of the reasons I shot with primarily a 50 millimeter lens for almost my entire career, because that lens is super flat, meaning it doesn't distort. You don't get you don't get as much keystoning and weird stuff with it. it. Like a wide lens will make people have like alien heads if they get too close to the edge. Like it stretches stuff. You get you know you get pin cushioning and all kinds of stuff with super long lenses. The 50 was really flat, and then on top of that, before these amazing tools existed, I would manually correct the perspective in my photos, and that made them so much more powerful. And now you have it in just a button, which is cool. I like it, so there you go. Okay, other tool, I'm gonna use all soft. Look at that, that is really nice. Okay, that is Fuji 400H, uh, start to finish. Subtle, really subtle, and it really pairs nicely with this photo. I'm gonna do one more edit just to show you kind of just a different way you could go. Um, I, I, let's see. Let's do, oh man, this is as extreme as it gets. I'm gonna to go to Ektar. So Fuji 400H is like our most pastel, like low saturation look, except for maybe Portrait 160. I'm gonna to go to Ektar 100 in the Adventure Everyday Pack which is our most colorful look that we've ever emulated ever. And we'll just see what happens. So, all right, we've turned, <laughs> we've turned the color way on. Um, I'm going to adjust for this preset just a little bit. I'm gonna bring the exposure down and I'm gonna cool it off. All right, super colorful, punchy, as much contrast as is humanly possible. It, Ektar is super popular with everybody. Um, it's funny, Ektar and Fuji 400H, this is Fuji 400H, now it looks like I turned the lights, you know, now it looks like I like sucked all the color out, although we were used to this just a second ago. These are the two most popular looks that we make, bar none, like the most that are sold. The, these two packs, the Venture Every Day and Fuji Original, almost everybody in the community owns both of those. Um, totally different vibe. I like Ektar because it is just full of life and color, as you can see here. One tool that we added to kind of give you the best of all possible worlds, it's called Orange Reduction. You hardly ever need to use it, hardly ever, but this is one of those cases where it would be good. Because if I go to temperature and I drop it any lower than it is right now, the, the uh, background back here, like this, this house, and even their clothing starts to look too cool to me. It looks like the, the, the white balance is off, even though their skin is now like, you know, a better, uh, a better tone, it's not so orange. Um, Ektar has a lot of orange in it. That's just how it is. It was actually meant to be a landscape film. 
okay? Like a like a, a fake slide film. If anyone here who's watching here has ever even seen slide film, uh, that's what it was meant to look like. So we added orange reduction, which is a kind of a last use tool that just takes a little bit of the edge off orange. So if I roll over it, it just takes a little edge off of the orange, still gives you that really beautiful ektar look. Um, and that's, that's it. It's just really nice. If these highlights are a little bit too much, you could just do highlight soft. And now we can compare the two. Look at that, like very, very different moods. Um, I don't know which one I like more. Uh, I think, uh, okay, here's, here's the lesson. Fuji 400H on the left works because they, they can be seen as being fairly serene. Uh, there is a nice light look to the image overall. There's the white house, like lighter clothing, so it works. That's a pretty good alignment of um, preset and mood. Now on the right, we've got Ektar 100. Ektar is about color and joy and vibrancy. And I can see that in their expressions, like the way they are touching each other and, and the way the, the energy they give off is a lot of love and a lot of happiness, so it works. Um, and it just looks good on them. So both work. They're both, they're both good alignments for different reasons. I hope that was helpful, Giselle. Do we have a question? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Okay, so Vernon de Coker asks, how do I add more contrast without using the contrast slider? Uh, great question. I'll, I'll answer that very quickly for you. Um, let's go to the, uh, let's go to the uh, Fuji 400H edit. So Fuji 400H has like almost no contrast. That's just the nature of that film. If you wanted to add more contrast, yes, do not go to the contrast slider. You'll see that they're almost in every preset or style we make, they're maxed out. It's part of our formula, I guess, this plus a few other things to make to, to make these presets have micro contrast, which is a really important feature of real film. Um, so we don't ever recommend people really mess with the contrast slider. You should go to the tone profile section and do your contrast adjustments there if you want to keep a true film look that tracks with real film. So if, if it's important to you that it look like it would as on film, like if you were to shoot this side by side, then use the tone profile section. Don't touch the contrast section. And I would use like all hard, whoops. Well, all hard would make the shadows and the highlights have more contrast. Or if you wanted to just increase like shadow contrast detail, which is what I would recommend for this image, I would just do a shadow hard. So like that, see, see how that brings in um, more contrast without kind of destroying that 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 softness of real film so that is my answer and we did kind of the opposite on this image we wanted to reduce contrast especially in the highlights so we did highlight soft i hope that helps vernon so all right thank you for that question thanks for being part of the community too i, I see you around all the time so i appreciate it all right we're going to do uh, three more real quick and we're going to wrap it up um, again, if you have any questions, please ask them now. Otherwise, this will be forever entombed as a pre-recorded video. And yeah, it's still going to be awesome, but you can't ask me live. Okay, so this is by Michaela Frick, and it just says, surprise me. You are awesome, Michaela. I, I think surprises are fun, so that's good. Um, this looks like Ektar to me, straight up. Uh, may, maybe that or Fuji Push. So... Why Ektar? Bold, colorful, exciting, joyful. So let's start there. Uh, let's increase the exposure. And I'm going to try to bring back, there's a, a lot of uh, kind of hot highlights right here. Let's bring those back with highlights soft. There we go. Looks great. Uh, I wonder if auto transform would work. There's no like buildings in here. It's all nature, but maybe it would work. Uh, kind of works. It's better. Actually, that works pretty good. Actually, it works really well. Okay, so I used auto transform. Um, and the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just recrop a little bit. I know that we're missing part of their feet. 
uh, I don't know. I don't know what the greater evil is, like to remove part of their feet or to have it be really crooked. I'm going to remove part of their feet and I'm going to either crop like this. Maybe, maybe even to here. That's pretty nice. Actually, that's pretty nice. Um, I would either crop like that or I would get a four by three or four by five crop and do um, something vertical like that. I don't know. Let me see. Nah, I like the other one. Boop, boop, and boop. That looks good. All right, so Michaela, that's what I would recommend is Ektar 100. That's pretty sweet. Yes, we have a question. Uh, so yeah, we have a, a few. Um, so uh, Jan asks, uh, what black and white film simulation would you recommend for this family? And then uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Trent uh, was asking for a Fuji push as well. And then once oh, I was going to do that. Once, once you're done with those, we got one more. OK, so Jan asks, what would be a good black and white film simulation emulation preset to use on this image? Um, and then Trent had a follow-up question of how would this image look with Fuji pushed? So, which was, which was what I was going to do next. So let me do that real quick and then I'll do black and white. Um, all right. So yes. So Trent Fuji pushed other great choice is totally what I was thinking of too. Uh, Fuji pushed is like taking a Fuji film from Fuji original and making it like really excited more punchy, more color, just more joyful. So let's do that. Um, Fuji color pushed. Uh, let's see. Boop. They're all very pink. That's just uh, the nature of Fuji. When you push it, um, we can correct that just a little bit with the tint slider. And by the way, nothing is good. I think Ektar just ruins your eyes. Like if you, if you stare at this too long, this becomes like normal for you. It's like skiing with your ski, ski goggles on and you take them off and the world is like a different color. Um, it's such a perfect look that it takes me a minute to adjust to anything else, but we will. So let's do Fuji 400H. Uh, let's, do, let's do like an extremely different look. I hope this is okay. This film is different than any of the other ones in the Fuji Color Push pack. So Fuji 400H push two stops has uh, flatter highlights and very pink highlights. Um, let's try it. So I applied Fuji 400H push two stops. I'm going to do some slight temperature tint and exposure adjustments because it is a different film. Uh, I think the warmth is pretty good. It's a little bit pink. I'm looking to be right about there, yeah, right about there. Okay. So let's compare those. And Jan, I will, I will do uh, black and white in a minute. I have a different photo for that one. Um, so we've got Ektar on the left, and then we've got kind of a more stylized, like kind of dreamy, uh, happy Fuji 400H push two stops on the right. So left is from the Adventure Everyday Pack. Right is from the Fuji Push Pack. They're both excellent. Fuji Push in general is, is used more for in general for like engagement sessions uh, and weddings. That's kind of like it's, it's wheelhouse. Um, sometimes for other kinds of photos, uh, fashion, but that's kind of where it lives. And Ektar is just fantastic for like basically almost anything. Uh, anything that's happy, it looks killer. Uh, or sports or travel, so good. So I hope that helps. And Jan, I am now going to ask, answer your question. So you wanted to know about black and white. Uh, this image is like perfect for it. Why? Um, the, the lighting is really nice and subtle. Um, it's indoors, so the lighting may be difficult. It doesn't look like it's gonna be difficult though. It looks like pretty clean light. Um, but just this, this kind of, uh, the, the, the geometry and symmetry of this composition, I think is gonna lend itself really nicely to black and white. It's going to be a really fun, funny picture. So, uh, so Michaela, hope you enjoyed that last edit. This is for Mare Brianna, Brianna, Mare. I'm sorry if I don't get that right. Thank you for sending this in. So we're going to go to the Ilford original pack. This pack was just made for black and white lovers.
or this is or it will make you a black and white lover it only has black and white films with a lot of really cool options um so let's start so we've got pan f which is our most intense black and white look it's got really black blacks really white whites i think it's a little too much for this image uh, we've got hp5 which is kind of a really nice neutral cl super classical look um, it's it's got kind of um, middle contrast you know not too much not too little uh, it's got a nice grain structure if you if you zoom in it's really got a very classic grain structure it's just a great all-around film and then last but not least we've got delta 3200 which is kind of glowing ethereal and it is the king of grain this is like if you like grain this is like dump all the grain on it and uh, that's actually why i like i love that film it's all about the grain so i think it's gonna be one or the other i think i'm gonna do hp5 yeah okay so hp5 a little bit different workflow we're not so concerned with temperature and tint although that that does have that does have some effect to black and white images um, i've gotten into more detail on that on more specific black and white videos that i've done but just know that basically as long as it's in the ballpark of looking correct before you start so this looks like in the ballpark for temperature and tint then it'll work just fine for black and white so don't you don't need to touch it exposure um i think i think it was just about right maybe up a little bit yeah i think it was just about right we want to keep detail in the highlights and the shadows midtones look killer it's good so that's it that's a basic basic edit uh there's a few things i want to do to really play with this image because it has so much potential uh let's see here i'm going to do auto transform yes uh lens correction actually i like the vignetting we're gonna leave that alone uh okay so next thing uh, let's see tone profile do i want to mess with that i think i'm gonna do shadow hard yes okay all right now we have these black and white filters so with real black and white film you can put colored glass filters on your lens when you're shooting and that will change the way that your black and white film reacts black and white film is actually sensitive to color in particular it's sensitive to red and these filters change how those colors are rendered in the black and white image super fun stuff if you're like getting into black and white photography you you absolutely have to buy a red a green and a yellow filter and a polarizing filter and you will just like blow your own mind like it is so fun so we've emulated these as well um, if we use the red is going to have there we go it kind of makes the skin a little bit darker okay green and yellow so see how much that affects everything in the image yellow is kind of a very classic black and white filter it's it it was known as kind of like nature's skin blemish remover it, it it increases the luminance in skin tones makes skin tones brighter and it hides like blemishes uh, i think it's like perfect for this i don't usually use the yellow filter but it really like makes them pop out of the middle so i love it so there's the yellow filter and the last little tool is what color paper do we want to use um, we've emulated warm tone cool tone and neutral paper Things are neutral by default, but I think warm tone would look good on this. So I'm gonna use a warm tone paper. It is the exact same color as Ilford warm tone. Well, that's a hard word to say, paper. The exact same kind of sepia color, and I love it. It's like not too much, not too little. And then here's cool tone, but that's for more like, I feel that's for more serious images. Like, I don't know, a ship sailing in a storm or like, you know, some really edgy street photography or something. But for this, I think warm tone looks good. All right, last but not least, uh, I think a different crop could really make this look super even better. Maybe like if you were shooting a Hasselblad, you know, you would have a square crop. That would be kind of cool. Although I feel like Instagram kind of ruined Hasselblad because now it just looks like an Instagram. It's really too bad, actually. Um, so that's kind, of a, that's kind of a nice crop. Maybe I'll get rid of these black air vents. That's fun. I think that's really nice or what i could do is 
keep the old crop, but just, you know, bring it in. Oh, I don't want to do freestyle. Just bring it in like that. And then I don't, that, that looks really classic. Okay. I'm spending a lot of time on this photo. This is you. This is for you, Jan. Um, that looks really good. Okay. Last thing I'm going to do, I don't usually, I don't do this very often in videos, but I'm going to actually take a brush and I am going to do some uh, burning. So I'm not going to light it on fire. I'm going to burn it, meaning I'm going to make parts of the image darker like you would in a light room. The opposite of that is called dodging. You make something lighter. But I'm going to burn it. I'm going to use, um, I'm just going to use, I'm going to start with just down on exposure, maybe a little bit down on highlights and shadows. There's no apps, there's no like super wrong way to do this. Everyone's got their own flavor of brush. Um, so I've got my brush set up. I'm just going to like darken some of this. I'm going to do kind of a real rough, like quick one. Why am I doing this? You ask, because the, the really cool part of this image is the middle. And by cool, I mean neat. And uh, fiddle, you know, the, the technical term is fiddle farting. I'm fiddle farting around. So I got kind of a basic burn. You don't want halos. They're very bad. Uh, when I was a photojournalist, we also called them like the hand of God. You don't want that. Um, but anyway, I got my basic dodge and burn. And then what I like to do is collapse the entire brush. And it just gives you an amount. And then I like to fine tune it. So if that was like a little bit too much, I can kind of back it off a little bit. So I usually get pretty close to the people and, and make it pretty extreme. And then I back it up. And then you get just about what you want. There you go. Boom. For and after fun photo. So thank you very much, Mayor. And I hope you keep sending in photos. And we got our last photo here. It's your last chance to ask me a question before I take off into the sunset. Do we have a question? Uh, yes. We got a, a couple, maybe we can go uh, rapid fire. Sure. Um, Trent uh, asked, uh, what happens if you use a tool out of a different pack? Will it mess it up? So like, so, like comb profiles or? Okay, so Trent asks, what happens if you use a tool out of a different pack? Um, I mostly advise against it because the, the tools are all calibrated to the films inside the pack. So I wouldn't do that. The, oh, yeah, yeah, like what Casey just mentioned. The one exception, and it's something we do internally, and it, uh, that I think works super duper cool and well, is taking these really amazing black and white uh, filters in here, like these tools, and using them with a black and white from a different pack. So, for example, you could use Triax image. That looks pretty damn awesome actually, but you can use Triax from this, from the Adventure Everyday Pack. If you don't know what Triax is, you are missing out. It's the most famous black and white film ever. And then you can go into the uh, tools from the Ilford Pack, which is kind of our black and white film lovers pack. And then you can go in and use, you know, green, red, yellow filters out of that and do some fun stuff or do like warm tone. That See, that looks so good. Holy, holy crap. So yes, your answer is yes. You can sometimes mix and match tools, uh, but don't, don't like take the tone profiles out of one pack and then just like delete them from all the other packs and use them all together to try to save space in your Lightroom because they're not calibrated for other packs. So hope that helps. Um, that looks so good. I was gonna do this in color, but this looks like something from like a J Crew catalog or something. I don't know. Um, okay. Oh, this is from Mare as well. Cool. It's a nice little set of photos there. Um, okay, I'm gonna edit this in color and then we're gonna call it a day. Uh, I I, w I was meaning to edit this in color. Um, I I like I love this photo because it's it's like perfect except maybe for the tree coming out of his foot. That that's just like such a nitpicky little thing, but uh. Everybody is doing something. Everyone's doing something fun. I love it. There's a lot of action here and a lot of personality. 
Um, I love it when you get your families to interact. That's one of the most powerful things you can do as a portrait or family photographer. If you want just a little tip is to encourage connection and, and have them be themselves. This is a perfect example. Another, another example of encouraging connection, um, and I think it's why I love this photo so much, is look at how they're all touching each other. It's great. It's like energy is being passed through the photo, through their touch. It's, it's fantastic. Um, and I, I feel that in, in here as well. So that's my little mini tip for uh, family portrait photographers. Like get the, get the real button down, you know, photo that your clients are expecting, of course. But then, I mean, once you're done with that, play around with connection and motion and activity. And I think you get the real star photos at that point. So I, I love this one. Um, okay, I'm gonna edit this real quick. Uh, this one looked like Ektar to me as well. I know I'm a broken record. Um, Ektar, a little bit cooler. Look at these greens. Oh my God, I just wanna eat them. Um, so I cooled it down, looking around, is it too green, too magenta? I don't think it's either. Maybe it's too cool. Yeah, perfect. Whoops. Let's do uh, before and after. Oh, pff, that's funny. Showing It's showing that one. Oh, that's fine. Anyway, um, I can just do before and after right there. So that's before and after with Ektar. Look how clean and nice that is. But I mean, also look at the, look at Tri-X. That looks amazing. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, uh, oh, you know what's cool is both of those, both of these looks are in the Adventure Everyday Pack, which is maybe why it's one of our top sellers. I'm not sure, but I hope that was useful. Um, I really enjoyed teaching today, and I love when everyone sends in their photos. Keep doing it. The community is everything. You guys are amazing. Um, we've got a lot of really new cool stuff coming out soon. Um, which I can't tell you about right now. <laughs> the whole marketing team would like literally kill me. Um, but a lot of cool stuff and it all comes from the community. It's all inspired by you guys and the wonderful conversations that we have in that group. Uh, I love it. So if you are seeing this and you don't even know what Mass and Labs is, oh my gosh, you gotta join us. Uh, we're one big happy family. You can find us on Facebook. Just go here. Uh, it doesn't matter if you own anything we make or not. All are welcome. We love everybody. The only rule is to be kind to each other and to help each other learn. And we make a lot of great videos every week. We share a lot of good information there, and it's a great place to learn. So join us. Um, also, if you want to see how Mass and Labs looks like on your photo, you can always drop in a raw file in the community, and you'll have like 10 to 20 people edit it for you in any style you want that we make. And it's a great way to see before you buy if you want. Um, what else can I say? Oh yes, if you want to message us directly, you can reach us through our DMs at m.me forward slash Mass and Labs. We're happy to answer any questions you may have. If you are watching this right now on YouTube, smash that bell, ding that dinger. Don't miss a single live edit. If you hit that bell and you subscribe, you will get an alert when these come out and you can stop whatever boring, tedious thing that you were stuck doing and you can escape to the bathroom or outside or wherever and you can watch another editing video live or whatever, I don't know. Um, yeah, so please subscribe. It's, it's totally worth your while. So until next time, I hope you have a great day. Thank you for joining me and happy editing.